It is so nice to see each and every one of you here this morning. Um, <clears throat> has everybody had a good week? Yeah, yeah. Well, today's about, we're about ready to start a good week right now because this morning we're going to praise Jesus. And um, we're so happy that we all know Jesus Christ as our Savior this morning and we're excited to sing this opening song, which... Um, the closing, the closed out back there with the Carrie Job singing a song. I'm not sure the name of it, but we're going to sing um, a Carrie Job song right now called Forever. And forever, uh, we're thankful that we can worship and glorify and honor him. And so um, we're going to do that this morning uh, with this very first song. So if you'll stand with us, and we'd, we really encourage you to come up and worship with us. Um, it encourages us, and um, I just encourage you to do that with us this morning. The song is called Forever. Here we go. 
this song this morning. Um, I was thinking back to a couple weeks ago um, when we all joined together as a congregation in prayer. Um, and this, this song came to mind, or not a song, this, this verse came to mind. And it's James 5.15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven to, of him. And I was thinking of this verse, um, and I was just thinking about how we come here so broken. Um, in need of healing as the song um, sings, as we sing about in the song. Um, so this morning, 
I just ask that we, um, we join together as a congregation. Just find a few people next to you and pray for them and pray for healing. Pray for this healing rain to come. Pray for our church to reach the nations because that's what God calls us to do, to go out and tell the world of him and to pray for one another. Pray for healing. Um, and you can, also, you can always pray silently to yourself. If you, you don't feel comfortable joining, but the, the body of Christ is meant to join together, to pray together. Um, so at this time, just take these next few minutes and just grab two people, pray for them, pray for healing. chorus one more time as we sing again. Jazz Revival Church this morning. We welcome you this morning, and we're so glad that you're here. And I'd like to ask the ushers if they would hand out the Ministry of Friendship books. And if you are visiting with us this morning, we are so glad that you are. If you will sign the Ministry of Friendship book along with everyone else. That will give us record of your attendance with us today. And um, you can keep that book opened up and send it back the other direction, and that will help you to get better acquainted with those who are seated in your row. A few things that I need to mention uh, for this week. We have an annual meeting after the, about 20 minutes after the morning service is done. And one final time, I need to go through this to make this official. In your bulletin insert, you'll see a sample ballot sheet uh, for May 15th. And it says for Jasper Bible Church 2016 to 2017 fiscal year, vote by placing an X next to the desired nominee. All nominees are listed in alphabetical order. Elder, uh, vote for uh, two. Three names are given. John Fankhauser, Jerry Merlant, Mike Reno. Uh, one three-year term needed, one two-year term needed. For uh, Deacon, vote for two. Four names are given. Josh Ford, Paul Green, Jerry Merlant, Mike Reno. And two three-year terms needed for deaconess. Vote for one. Three names are given. Cassie Connan, Amanda Gotts, Judy Long. One three-year term needed. Sunday School Superintendent, vote for one. Three names are given. Gina Helmanak, Allie Jewett, Chris Polarski. Runner-up will assume assistant position. One one-year term needed. Sunday School Secretary, vote for one. Four names given. Brenda Craig, Julie Fankhauser, Jenna Ford, Allie Jewett. Runner-up will assume assistant position. One one-year term needed. And then the note at the bottom, uh, some nominees are listed for more than one position. If elected for both positions, the nominee will serve in his or her preferred position. And you may vote for the nominee in each position where he or she is listed. Because of the annual meeting and the potluck following, there'll be no evening uh, service. Also in the foyer are annual reports, one per family. If you're taking those home, feel free to make use of that. You don't have to be a member of our church. In fact, we'd encourage you to uh, take those home with you. Tomorrow night, college and career party.
a supper and Bible study at our place. And then also, um, I'll mention a little bit later that the last announcement will be the preview for the family movie night this Friday night, which is the movie This Is Our Time. Also, you'll notice that grade 7 through 12 will be going miniature golfing and for ice cream at Koala Berry, and that's Friday of May 27th at 6 o'clock. I have a sign-up sheet. If you have yet to sign up and plan to be in on that, connect with me after the service. I'll make sure that you get signed up for that. Also, there's information on the bulletin board for a fundraiser for Mackenzie Ream, which will be a taco dinner, and uh, she got home from the hospital, by the way. Some great news on that and continue to be praying for her as she recuperates. You'll also notice graduation night, honoring our high school graduates on Sunday night of June 12th. If you have not been, if you're a high school graduate and you have not been contacted about that yet, please connect with me if you will, so I can give you some more information about that. Uh, Teens, you'll see the date for Cedar Point. Uh, What gets you officially signed up is your uh, $42 for the ticket and your uh, completed permission slip, and you can get the permission slips from me. In the foyer, you will notice the baby bottles. That's for Care Pregnancy Center. You can get an empty baby bottle, then bring that back, if you will, before Father's Day. And that is a fundraiser that they are doing. For Emily Helmanak and her trip to uh, Uganda coming up, the total now is uh, 3,360 toward the 5,500. So to give you that updated information. Otherwise, I think before we have our prayer requests and our uh, offering, we have a preview of the movie for this Friday night's movie night. thought this day would never come. I need proof. That my little sister almost beat me to graduation? Professor, any words of wisdom for us on this auspicious occasion? God has a purpose for all of you. It was our time. The whole world was ahead of us. Dude, you're getting married. I am so proud of you. Listen, you all will be as happy someday. What are you writing these days? Uh, I'm not. I'm mostly making sandwiches. Everybody's off on their own adventure while you... Get left behind. Ale and I have been offered positions with Embrace a Village. It's an organization that serves leprosy colonies in India. Luke and L.A. are off to India, changing it for good, and I've got a apron. It was an accident. L.A. come out in accident. front of the car. No, it's the driver's fault. He's going too fast. Finding driver won't bring us back. She's gone, Dad. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around this, okay? I mean, what is the lesson of all this? Try to do something good in the world and you'll get cut down. God took her, and I'm not ready to think that it was for no reason. The most important question is, Who is God asking me to be? Ale said that I was a voice to my generation. I feel like I have an opportunity to use this medium to make a direct difference for God's kingdom. God has something really important for you to do. There's something important for you to do. The Fund for the Children's Home. What a wonderful way to leave a legacy for LA. The voice is spreading. That's the movie, This Is Our Time, and it's this Friday at uh, 7 o'clock. And as the ushers are coming up for this morning's offering, uh, good to have uh, Judy Sullins back with us today, and she wanted to make sure that I mentioned on her behalf to be thanking you, especially for all of the prayers and uh, the meals and uh, all those who have helped out and, uh, as she has recuperated from her uh, surgery. And uh, speaking of uh, surgery, our uh, daughter Olivia has a hip surgery this Thursday, if you'll be remembering her in your prayers. Also, um, uh, Dean uh, Whitehead is in Toledo Hospital. Uh, Gary Ruth had 
called. We wanted us to be praying especially for some physical needs that he has. Um, John Lakatos has a surgery coming up in the future. Uh, Lois DeBacker is with us, uh, and uh, we'll be finding out more information concerning the uh, chemo that uh, will be needed for uh, the cancer that has returned. So remember that, if you will. And I also mentioned that uh, uh, Mackenzie Reem uh, made it home from the hospital. And I know there were many, many others that we were praying for during our Sunday school hour and your classes as well. So remember these, if you will, in your prayers. And we will have our prayer for this morning's offering. And I believe uh, James and Lori have the offertory special for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for how you hear and answer our prayers. And we think of uh, Olivia's surgery coming up Thursday. I just pray that things will go perfectly well and she'll have a speedy process in recuperating so that she can get back to the routine and not have any problems with uh, getting back to school and getting caught up with things. And pray also for uh, John Lakatos with this upcoming surgery scheduled for uh, uh, Jean Onstead with uh, surgery the following week. I just pray that you would just bless and meet each and every need and Thank you that Judy Sullins could be back with us. I just pray that you would continue to strengthen her each, each day. We think, too, of uh, Dean Whitehead, that you would uh, encourage him and meet his physical needs. And for, and for Gary, that uh, uh, this would be a really good week of uh, physical health for him. And we think, too, of uh, Mackenzie. I thank you so much that she was able to be, uh, get home. And I just pray that she'll continue to, uh, through the physical therapy, get stronger and get a full recovery. And, Pray for uh, Lois that she'll have a good report this week and that you'll just meet each and every uh, need. And we think of those who arrived here uh, with a, a heavy heart and with a burden upon their heart. And, and I just pray that uh, as they look to you for that uh, healing rain as we, we uh, uh, sang about, that, that you would uh, bless, that you would meet each and every need. And pray for our country. Pray that those that govern over us would uh, look to you and your word for guidance and wisdom. And, I ask your blessing now upon this morning's offering, thanking you for the privilege that we have to give back to you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This song this morning is called Multiply by I Need to Breathe. Um, and usually, if you've heard this on the radio, it's a faster song. Um, but we kind of slowed it down and turned it to more of a ballad so you could just uh, really listen to the words. Um, so this song is called Multiplied. This 
convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you will take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 212, if you'd like to. If not, you're very welcome to just leave that hymnal right in that little cubby thingy and look up here at the wall. It's perfect. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there. Although, I am going to make you stand. So if you will take your hymnals or look up the wall, we are going to sing hymn number 212, which is... Um, <clears throat> nothing but the blood of Jesus. So let's stand and let's sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. How are we doing on time, Pastor? What does that mean? Because I was going to have a little fun with this hymn, but... Uh, I know, let's do this side. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Da da da, da 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 da. And I say, you want to do that stand up, sit down thing? Let's do it. Come on, you need your exercise. Come on, let's go. Here, here. <clears throat> All right, so you guys are going to stand up and sing it. Yeah, sit down. You guys are going to stand and sing. And then when, you, when they sing, you sit down and stand up, okay? Here we go.
so have a seat, and you guys are going to start at this time. Ready? <laughs> Nothing can for Cinnatown. Here we go. Ready? Nothing. stand and then the guys okay so the women will start it and we'll see who does better here we go ladies stand up last first yeah james is by himself <laughs> all right here we go ladies only stand here we go here we go this 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 is with me because you guys are going to be sleeping during the whole sermon because of that. I'm sorry. How other religions began. Someone had a private idea about God. Or someone had a private dream about God. Or someone had a private encounter with an angel. Then that single someone told the rest of the world. This makes other religions impossible to verify because there are no eyewitnesses of the prime event. How Christianity started. Jesus spent three years doing miracles and teaching publicly. Jesus was executed publicly. Jesus was buried and rose from a public tomb. Publicly. Jesus showed that he was alive. Publicly. Then it was the public that told the rest of the world. Christianity is the world's most testable religion. You know, there is one thing about being a Christian. We don't have to have blind faith in some fictional thing. Jesus literally came to this earth. He lived a sinless life. We heard him preach. 2,000 years ago, they heard him preach for three and a half years. They saw his life. They saw his character. They literally saw him die on the cross. They literally and physically saw him come back to life again and saw him ascend into heaven. Historical fact. Not some blind faith. And because he rose from the dead, as we sang in that song forever this morning, because of that fact, he showed himself to be God the Son. He showed himself to be deity. He showed himself to be indeed the one way to heaven. And Jesus said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. The only way you'll get to heaven is through receiving Jesus and his death on the cross as payment for your sins. There's no other world religion that will get you there. There's no other work that you could do. Communion, baptism, being a good neighbor. That's our works. And it's through our works we could never enter God's holy heaven. It's only through the work that he had done. 
in dying on the, on the cross and his sacrifice on the cross, his blood being a covering for our sin. I wonder about you. Who or what are you trusting in to enter God's holy heaven? There's only one way to get to heaven, and it's through Jesus. And the great news is he has offered this free gift of salvation to each and every one of you. If you bow your heads, please. I know that there are many of you who have made that one-time decision to receive Jesus as your Savior. You can be praying for those who need to make that decision. The Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That Jesus indeed, indeed lived a perfect life and then died on the cross, taking upon himself the punishment that we deserved for our sin. He didn't stay dead, but he came back to life again. And he offers eternal life to those who will receive him as Savior. I'm going to give you the opportunity to pray a prayer with me. Nothing magical about the words. But God knows the sincerity of your heart and he knows your heart. If you'd like to make that decision this morning, based on God's word, to be sure of heaven, simply follow along with me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned. But I want to go to heaven someday. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. That he came back to life again. So I ask him to be my savior. I invite him into my life to forgive my sins so I can go to heaven someday. And Lord, you know the hearts of each one here. And you know those who just prayed that prayer with me. Please give them the courage to share that with me after the service this morning. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise team, if you'll come back up again and lead us in hymn number 204 before our main message, 204. It's the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We'll sing all three verses before we continue our study in the New Testament book of Philippians. We'll be in Philippians 3. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hymn number 204, all three verses. Let's stand as we sing, please.
And indeed, if you will turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, and if you are using the Bible that is right in front of you, it is page 1163, 1163, Philippians chapter 3, yes. Okay, that's right. I saw her earlier, and welcome back. I didn't see where she was at for this morning, but uh, welcome back all the way from Oregon. So uh, glad you brought some sunny weather with us. And some snowflakes this morning. Anybody see those? Yeah. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, page 11, 63, in a message entitled, Cleansing for the Soul. You'll notice the spelling of the word soul. Well, I stepped in it. I was walking along, minding my own business, and suddenly, out of nowhere, I stepped in it. My dog gave me the gift that keeps on giving. It took the joy out of my entire morning, and I had no idea that I had so many grooves and crevices in the bottom of my shoe. My shoes should have had some warning label that said, not compatible with stepping in it. But I did. And when we step in it, we are left to make a decision. We can choose to either focus on what we have stepped in, or we can focus on God's blessings. And Paul emphasizes here in Philippians chapter 3, Verses 13 and 14, where our focus should be when we step in it. When something really stinky enters into our world and contaminates our soul. You will notice, first of all, that Paul reminds us that the purpose of yesterday is for learning from God. The purpose for yesterday is for learning from God. Notice as he begins in verse 13. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. You messed up yesterday, didn't you? So did I. You said wrong words. You reacted the wrong way. You proceeded when you should have resisted. And you went ahead and did something when you shouldn't have. You waited, but you should have worked. And it happened wrong. Here's the problem, though. You will mess up even more if you look at yesterday's mess ups and allow them to influence you today, to allow them to drag you down. Do you know why in the state of Washington that the trees there last for centuries? The Forest Department credits the daily rains in the area for the longevity of the Cascade Forests. The lightning strikes that could completely wipe out the forest, these drenched trees just don't catch on fire. And likewise, yesterday's failures can be a lightning bolt. Unless we allow God to give us a daily downpour of forgiveness and grace. So if you've blown it and you've known it, then learn from it. Learn to walk down a different path next time. Notice who it is that writes these words, forgetting what is behind. 
It's the Apostle Paul that was writing to the Philippians. Do you know anything about his past? Before he became a believer in Christ, he was persecuting Christians. Trying to get them arrested and even martyred. So the Apostle Paul had good reason to forget what was behind. And he had good reason for wallowing in whatever it was that would be upsetting him. And he needed to embrace the grace. He needed to embrace the forgiveness that God had offered. And you know, sometimes when we mess things up, sometimes when we step in it, what happens is we have a difficult time forgiving ourselves. And for some weird reason, we think that God is happy about that. That God is looking down on us in heaven and he's saying, oh, he really hates himself. She really hates herself. Oh, okay, I'll forgive that person. And it's not that way at all. In fact, when we refuse to forgive ourselves, when we have asked God to forgive us, when we refuse to do that, we are actually making light of his work upon the cross. Because he came for that purpose so that we could live life forgiven. He has given us permission. In fact, he has commanded us to forgive ourselves. So yesterday is for learning from God. Not for loathing about our failures. Yesterday is a day that we say, yes, I walked down a wrong path and I suffered the consequences for it. But God has taught me much from it. Yesterday is for learning from God. But tomorrow is for leaning on God. Notice as it continues. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Ira Stanfield wrote these words. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine or its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future for I know what Jesus said and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood. But his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. We don't know what lies ahead of us. So God wants us to prepare for the future, but God does not ask us to try to fix tomorrow's problems today. If you remember from a previous sermon, we saw that the Greek word for worry, was actually a compound word. It combines the verb, which means to divide, with a noun, which refers to the mind. So worry, according to the Bible, is to divide the mind between today and tomorrow. And when that happens, we're left with a shortage of energy for both today and tomorrow. And the result is that both days stink, just like the shoe that stepped in it. As Corey Temboom said, worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. Worry empties today of its strength. So our job is not to worry about tomorrow. It's to trust in the one who holds tomorrow. 
What do you got coming up this week? The rest of this month? A test? A procedure? A trial? A meeting? An appointment? An interview? Something that you're dreading? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to divide the mind and worry so that both today and tomorrow go wrong? Or will you trust in the one who holds tomorrow? I know you can hardly focus because you're wondering what became of my shoe. Would it ever be cleansed? Would it ever be able to be used again? I want to keep you from being in suspense any longer. I cleaned the bottom of my shoe so spick and span that I could eat breakfast off from it. I didn't, but could have. And then what I did is I learned in the future to walk more carefully, to walk a different direction. And I'm proud to say that I have kept my soul clean. I'm proud to say that I no longer feel like a heel. Yeah, and I, I thought that was a shoe in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but if, if yesterday is for learning from God, and tomorrow is to lean on God, then what's today for? Today is for living for God. Notice the present tense of verse 14. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. There was an eighth grade boy. He tried out for the football team. The truth is he was no good at it. But the coach didn't cut him because he had such contagious enthusiasm. He would be seated there on the bench cheering on his teammates. What would happen at each game day? He and his dad would walk hand in hand up to the bleachers. There they would pray together for a moment. And then the boy would walk down and cheer on the team. Well, one day, the boy came to the game, but his dad wasn't there. And the coach said, hey, where's your dad at today? The boy explained that his dad had died that past week. The coach said, well, I'm so sorry. And he asked the boy, is there anything I can do for you? The boy said, yes, there sure is. Let me start tonight's game. Well, coach figured he'd have him in for a couple of plays and satisfy that situation and get him out in a hurry before it really made a difference. He got him in there, and as an amazing thing as it could be, this boy played fantastic. He played on defense, made a couple of sacks, some great tackles. He intercepted the ball and ran it for a touchdown. He recovered a fumble. Absolutely amazing how he played. And after playing the entire game, the coach asked him, What got into you, son? How did you get so much better so quickly? And the boy said, Well, nobody really knew this. But the reason why I walked my dad to the bleachers each time, because my dad is my dad was blind. And today was the first day that he saw me play. My question to you is, are you living as though your father is watching? Because your father is watching. And today is for living for God. As the soap opera says, it's one life to live. And you will not live it effectively for Jesus if you're fretting about the past or if you are fretting about the future. 
If you have messed up in the past, if you have stepped in it, then yesterday is for learning from God. If you're worried about what's ahead, trust the one who holds tomorrow. May tomorrow be that which is for leaning on God. But today is for living for God. And God wants us to move forward, not worrying about what's ahead, not fretting about what's behind. We can't undo that. But to move forward. God simply says as you move forward, watch your step. Go a different direction if need be. But quit wallowing in the past. Quit worrying about the future. Today is for living for God. He has given you today. And what Satan wants to have you do is to get all uptight about the past that you can do nothing about and to get all worked up about the future that you don't have control over. Today is for living for God. Will you do it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for God's word. And so often, we will get worked up about past sins that you have forgiven. Or we will get all worried about the future that we have no control over. And our mind is divided to a point where we can't truly live for you as we should. So convict us and challenge us. And may we realize that you indeed have the answer and that you indeed satisfy our soul. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise him if you'll come up and lead us in the closing chorus. And indeed that chorus is who can satisfy my soul. You'll notice in this song it's the correct spelling. And it's Jesus who can satisfy our soul. What sin have you been caught up in? Have you been caught up in the sin of worrying about the past? That which God has erased as far as the east is from the west? That is which God has forgiven? Or have you been preoccupied by the future and what you just don't know what's going to happen? Allow God to forgive that past. Trust him in the future. Live today for Jesus. As always, invitation is open. Let's stand as we sing. Who can satisfy my soul?
He indeed is alive and he is well and he reigns. He has forgiven you of your past. He has given you permission, not only permission, but a command to forgive yourself. He will help you in the future. Today's to live for him. May we do just that. Reminder that there's no evening service. Reminder that um, if you aren't able to stay for the annual meeting, there are annual reports, uh, one per family in the foyer. Feel free to help yourself to that. And at 10 2, we'll start the annual meeting, followed by a potluck. Let's close this time in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for God's word, for how practical it is in the everyday challenges that we face. May we not wallow in the past, may we not worry about the future. But may we live for you and trust you and be victorious as we serve you today. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and you are dismissed. <laughs>